Hi guys, I'm back with a second part to um, The Devil's Tree, Florida's first serial killer and the hauntings he left. Um, I'm making this one because it's much more graphic and um, it shows how truly twisted he was. It's got a lot more information in it. Um, once again, um, strong viewer discretion advised. If there's kids in the room, I'd get them out of the room. Okay. So here, here the story goes, the more graphic version. <sighs> the Devil's Tree, Florida's first serial killer and the hauntings he left. Found in Port St. Lucie, the Devil Tree is a big oak in a county park on Canal C-24, a mighty oak, an ordinary tree. Nothing to write home about except the fact that thing might as well growl and snatch up little old ladies and unsuspecting kids and gobble them up like a throwback from a grim fairy tale. The devil tree has an evil, macabre, and incredibly blood-soaked reputation, one that's entwined with Florida's history and its amazing capacity to attract the worst of the worst humanity has to offer. Today we're going to discuss the devil tree, its hauntings, its love, its lore, and more importantly, the hell spawn that created it. Florida's first serial killer. The story of the devil tree begins on January 8th, 1971, way before Hammock Park, where the mighty oak now stands, was created. The tale begins in a most bloody and shocking manner. When a serial killer, S-word, attacked and, and mutilates two teenage girls, the monster, after having his fill with the two girls, hangs them from the oak tree. He then buries the two victims in a shallow grave underneath the big oak tree only to return numerous times later to dig up the bodies and have his way with them before reburying them. Yeah, he liked to have his way with decomposing bodies. Disgusting. I think we can all agree on that. The man's name, Gerard John Shaver. The homicidal Broward County, Florida ex-policeman Though convicted in 1973 of only two mutilation murders, is believed to be responsible for at least 30 more killings. A sadistic sex beast by nature, Schaefer would lure young women off the roads with the help of his badge to rape, torture, mutilate, and murder. To say Schaefer was a tormented soul would be an oversimplification. The man was a monster, the sort whose very presence makes anti-death sentence zealots rethink their stance. Schaefer began experimenting with bondage and sadomasochism at around age 12. The man would inform his state psychiatrist, red flag, the man would inform his state psychiatrist that he loved to tie himself up to trees and get sexually excited by the lack of freedom. Schaefer would hurt and pleasure himself thinking about assaulting women from a very early age. Schaefer's earliest childhood memories or that he desired to be a lady, mainly because his sis was favored by his alcoholic, verbally abusive father. By the age of 14, Schaefer had a sweetheart named Cindy. Their relationship was sordid and strange. Not shocking. He would make her take part in role play fantasies. Fantasies that revolved around rape scenarios. 
1966, the man tried to enter the priesthood. He was rejected because he lacked faith. No kidding? By now, Gerard Schaefer was, trick was a ticking time bomb. The same year, enraged, faithless, and going down a black hole, the bomb exploded. By now, Gerard had graduated to animal cruelty. No, 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 no. Gerard was so angry that he just quit the Catholic religion and allowed his inner demons to run amok in his cerebellum. The bomb went kaboom, and Gerard decided, decided to start his true calling. He became a professional serial killer. Who says they want to be that when they grow up? Everything came to a head on that fateful year, 1966, on October 2nd. Nancy Leigner, age 20, and Pamela Nader, age 21, were having fun with their boyfriends in Alexander Springs Park in the, Oca in the Ocala National Forest. While the boys dove and played in the lake, the girls went out for a stroll. Their bodies turned up, essayed, and choked. A couple of hours after their boyfriends called in the cops and a manhunt ensued. They were Gerard's first victim, and he had gotten away with the deed, and no one even looked at him funny. He wasn't even a suspect. Schaefer turned law enforcement as a profession, graduating as a patrolman, the end of 1971, at age 25. The spree continues. Schaefer was convicted of only two murders. We'll get to those. But investigators would later uncover a slew of possible victims and missing person reports that were most likely part of Gerard's handiwork. In prison, Gerard boasted of killing more than 30 girls and women. The man who became a sheriff's deputy in Martin County, Florida, would prowl the streets and byways of the state, using his badge to attract his victims. He was a charming and oftentimes gregarious person, and his demeanor worked for his advantage. Arrest. Yay. On July 21st, 1972, Schaefer plucked up from the streets two teenage girls named Nancy Trotter and Paula Sue, who were not to be messed with. <laughs> and luckily, his dumbassery played a role in this. He kidnapped them, took them to a remote woodland, and tied them to trees, where he threatened to kill them or sell them into prostitution. He was about to get rid of the girls when his radio screeched and he was called away to a police emergency. <laughs> he could have ignored the call, but he's too stupid. And that's a good thing. He left both girls tied up and promised to return. That's like the worst promise ever. Miraculously, they managed to wiggle out of their bonds that called that call to Schaefer saved their lives. The girls who were aged 17 and 18 escaped their ropes and ran to the nearest police station. Ironically, their kidnappers own station. When Schaefer returned to the groves and discovered that his would-be victims had vanished, he called the station and insisted that he had done something foolish. He went on a long-winded explanation, telling the sheriff that he had simply pretended to kidnap the two girls in order to scare them silly. Schaefer's boss didn't buy it. G Gerard was stripped of his badge and slapped with a battery of charges. Somehow, in spite of everything, Schaefer managed to post his bail and was released from prison two months later on, a t on September 27, 1972. 
Schaefer abducted, tortured, and butchered Susan Place, age 17, and Georgia Jessup, 16. He buried their corpse right underneath the now famous Devil Tree in Oak Hammock Park in Port St. Lucia, Florida. Months later, after Schaefer had been had beaten the rap for kidnapping Nancy and Paula, a couple of hikers came upon the decomposing and mutilated, mutilated remains of Place and Jessup. The autopsy revealed that both girls had been tied to a tree at some point, and further investigation turned up the document, the documented eyewitness account that the girls were known hitchhikers. They were there were too many similarities. A war warrant was finally issued for Schaefer's house. In Schaefer's boudoir, the policeman recovered violent stories he had written that were full of accounts of the torture, rape, and murder of women, whom he routinely referred to as whores and sluts. A diary of all his victims, every more dim, even more damningly, a diary of all his victims, even more damningly, the experts found personal possessions such as jewelry, diaries, and in one case, teeth from at least eight young women and girls who had gone min missing in recent years. On December 3rd, 1995, Schaefer was found knifed to death in a cell. Yay! Fellow inmate Vincent Rivera was sentenced in 1999 of stabbing Schaefer and had 53 years and 10 months added to the life plus 20 years sentence. He was already serving for double murder. And I don't know why they punished him for killing this guy, but okay. This is a quote by Gerard Jones Schaefer. I am probably at least one of the top serial killers of this country. I am certainly one of the most interesting and maybe the most articulate and introspective. I am no doubt the most skillful, skillful killer. I killed women in all ways, from shooting, strangling, stabbing, and beheading, to odd ways such as drowning, smothering, and crucifixion. The Tale of the Devil Tree. How many women were tied and killed on the Devil Tree is still up for debate. Nonetheless, many believe that the Devil's Tree is permeated with the darkness that Gerard John Schaefer freed into the world. It is a skin-crawling locale full of nasty things and supernatural events. Satanists heard about the killings and chose the Devil's Tree as a new sacrifice, sacrificial site and meeting place. More than four women and, and counting have been found in the nearby area, many showing signs of having been tied or chained to a tree and violently violently abused. There are countless reports of hikers hearing odd sounds and singing through the pines and oaks, the spirits of the dead. Hooded figures are known to prowl the area. Sightings of these strange hooded figures have only swelled during the years. The trails have become ominous, and in many cases, vegetation has even ceased to grow in certain patches. Authorities have made various arrests in the area particularly of Ku Klux Klan members and other white supremacist groups. The area is filled with ghost sightings. Many believe that the spirit of the victims of Gerard haunt the forest. Hope not. I hope they're at peace in heaven. I'm sure they are. But, you know, when something violent happens, maybe there can be some kind of, you know, leftover stuff, you know, spiritual activity. Folks who have been, who have taken a piece of the tree, say a branch or, bar or bark, oftentimes come to some sort of misfortune immediately afterward. Don't take a piece of the tree as a, as a uh, souvenir, guys, okay? It's been described that the screams of young women can sometimes be heard emanating from the nearby bathrooms. So that's the extra grizzly version of the devil's tree and the vile 
Gerard Schaefer. John Gerard Schaefer. He's such an idiot, it's hard to remember his name. Schaefer. Yeah, he doesn't really deserve too much about him. But God bless the victims and God bless their families. And may God give them peace that surpasses all understanding. People like that, it's like they're not even human. It's like they're just robots. Killer robots. Hey guys, if you like my content, like and subscribe for more videos from me. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. And stay safe. Love you guys. God bless you all in Jesus' mighty name.